Hi guys, Squill here. Welcome to another Transport Fever 2 episode. I hope you're enjoying it still. I would say that we are probably turning on to the finals right now with this playthrough. We're probably one, two, maybe three videos left. Something like that before I think we'll we'll wrap it up. We're almost burger bun done as it is in copy rhyme slang. Uh, I, I've got to confess, I made a little bit of a cocker. Um, I, I broke this industry. Look. <laughs> This thing used to be all the way up here, and we were transporting plastic and goods and making tons of money, and I broke this. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Don't forget, video description has the map playthrough and the mods we're using if you want to try this map yourself. Uh, there's an entire playlist, over 30 episodes. Thank you so much to all you uh, members for supporting the channel. Don't forget, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification, and if you want to support me doing this stuff, please consider becoming a YouTube member and you'll get access to some cool little things in the comments section that you can use, little badges and emojis. And have a look. Just have a look. That's all I'm saying. Um, right. What are we doing today? Fixing this. Well, I'll show you what I did and how I fixed it. The problem, this industry collapsed completely, and I was like, what is going on? Why are, there no, why are the planes empty? Why are there no goods? Why is the steel not coming in? What's going on? And I tracked it back. It's, it's, a, it's a big problem, actually. Well, it's a little problem. Big, big problem with a little consequence. No, the other way around. It's a little problem with a big consequence. That's the word I was looking for. This, uh, the problem comes all the way back to here, or did. Um, what happened was, I reconfigured this truck station, I think, one or two episodes ago, and I just made it so it had bigger inroads, and I made it a bit longer. Um, and the effect of it was to disconnect that truck station from this airport. Annoyingly, I think what happened was I had a road coming into here which allowed this thing to connect to the airport directly. Uh, and when I reconfigured the roads to come in this way, that effectively put the travel distance of the truck station too far from the airport because the way the game works, for right or wrong, is it looks not how far away it is, it looks how long it is to walk on foot along the little footpath there and, it, and you can see it only gets to here. And once the road was here, that was enough to reach the airport. But when I reconfigured that road, it broke this. And that is unfortunately something that is in the game and you have to watch out for. Uh, it, you know, if you reconfigure your entrance roads, uh, you, you might end up breaking an entire industry. And this has been a very, very expensive um, mistake to make. What I've done is there was a passenger terminal here uh, passenger station which I've deleted because we're, we're definitely not going to be putting packs through here so I've put it there instead and the, the cars are queuing up the industry is going to take a while to pick up again the goods are being delivered to Worthing and Biggleswade so it's you know they're now suffering they're not getting any goods uh, backtracking on the industry uh, everything that fed the industry is broken so that includes all the incoming steel that was coming into here and the plastic uh, so don't forget the, the, the plastic was being flown out to here. Sorry, see the way around. The oil was being flown out to there, refined into plastic and brought back. So the oil industry got broke, the steel industry got broken, uh, the goods industry got broken, Like it, and you know we're running a fleet of planes. So you can imagine what that did to the finances. Yeah, We were losing 60 million. <laughs> just, yeah. it Just from a little road. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, I, I fixed it. It's building back up. It's going to take time, but we're good. In the last episode, we did a few things. Uh, we've been redoing our bus networks up here. Uh, train stations are running nicely. In fact, if you look at it, it's perhaps running a bit too nicely now. Romsey to Thatcham. I've just added another train there because the demand is huge uh, from Romsey to Thatcham. What's, what appears to be happening is if you look at this station here, uh, a lot of packs are wanting to go down to Aylsham and Princess Risborough. So this, you know, they, they're all going to Romsey. Aylsham to Romsey transfer is quite big. There is definitely a case to be made here for disconnecting. And this is where we, we had a debate on this in the comments section quite a few videos ago about, you know, I, I always ran shuttle services and a lot of people were saying, oh, that's inefficient. You should just run it as a long service. But... Here's the need to go back to shuttling because there's a much bigger demand between Romsey and Aylsham than there is between Aylsham and Princess Risper. So what that means is if I want to up the capacity and the frequency on this line, 
between Aylsham and Romsey. I have to do it on the whole thing. And then I'll be running over capacity down here into Princess Risper. There's, well, there's packs there. Um, but if there wasn't, like if there's a lower number of packs here, we would probably want to break this and have it as two shuttle services and put more capacity here and more frequency here than was needed. We can adjust them independently is what I'm trying to say. Whereas at the moment, it's just one line. Um, but the other thing is, you know, given how many people are queuing up on this platform, I've just added three more cars onto each train just to try and sort out the demand that's happening. You can see we've now got 132 capacity. So hopefully this will start to shift. Although, given the frequency at 124, I may add another train on that just to improve that. We'll see how it goes. We'll have to monitor it. There is a case to be made here possibly for a TGV between Romsey and Princess Risborough. These things, TGV services tend to present themselves. You don't get to pick and choose where to put them so much because you kind of have to either manufacture the demand or spot it and then take advantage of it. We'll come back to that later. I don't want to do that in this video. So in this video, we are going to continue. Well, there's two things I want to do. One is bring some tools to Logisol. Sorry, not tools, machines to Logisol. We need machines here. Actually, I don't know if we're going to do that in this video. Hmm. Machines could be a problem. I know we're going to bring more tools uh, from here. We're going to do that today, which we said we'd do to increase the demand here. So we're going to extend that line into here, bring more tools into Logisol. Machines are going to be a different problem entirely, I think. There is a machine factory up here, but we might have to look at taking advantage of that. The other thing is we want to get all goods coming into all stations. And at the moment, uh, obviously Biggles weight starting to pick up as is Worthing. At the moment, the main culprit for goods, if you look, is the only one that's on zero is Logisol Machines, which we know about. And let's see, there's a bit of machines getting to Princess Risborough. Uh, Hide Goods is the is the big one. Hide Goods. The, there are literally no goods coming into here. And it's on the edge of the map, which makes it kind of tricky. So that's the problem we're going to try and solve today. Uh, I've had a look around, and the nearest kind of goods factory I can find is effectively this one. There aren't many goods factories left if you look at the suppliers. Uh, a lot of them are being used, like that one is being used. There's that one on the right side of the map, another one on the right side of the map. Then there's that one by the coast, that one on the very right side of the map, and then this one which we're using. So. Basically, this is the only one, where's it gone? This is the only one, even on this half of the map, that we're not using. So this seems like a good candidate to use this. So then we start to look at the supply chain. We can see, obviously, there's a train line going in there. We could perhaps look at maybe trying to, you know, trying to come in and tuck into that line and go through it. I haven't looked at the details yet, but that's top of my head. I'm thinking about training it to here. Uh, and bringing the train line straight to there and grabbing the goods. That's what I'm thinking. It's the most efficient way, I think, of getting us across the land. Uh, so how do we get steel here and how do we get plastic here? Well, this is where it starts to get fun. So there is a plastic factory here. That's quite useful. Uh, however, it requires grain. Uh, now, grain, the nearest grain supplies these two, but they're already being used, um, if you remember. The grain is going out of here down to... Uh, Mitchell Dean, I think it is, which is the so it's it's part of that food distillery run. So we don't want to break that too much. Okay, so we can't nick them, but there is another one here, which is kind of handy. Um, and then there are actually some more grains up here, and there's even one all the way up here. So what I'm suggesting, what I'm thinking, right, in terms of the grains and plastic, we have a. Um, a dock here. We're only using one of the platforms at the moment. If we was to start bringing grain from here to here, the first thing it will do is, because obviously these are tapped out, so the first thing it will do is start to add any surplus demand. It will start to add it into the existing grain run. But if we then create a line from there to here and ship it, we can ship grain to here, it will then, all three of them will then start to split the load between the two different grain demands, right? And it'll level itself out. Now, as this thing starts to grow, because there's no way one, like this is two into one, okay? There's no way all that, the grain from here is going to fulfill that chemical plant once this starts to grow. 
Uh, so we'll then have to look at bringing grain either from here or from here. And my thought initially is here. I'm thinking we might put a dock down here. And we can bring the grain in there. And later on we could even bring crude to that dock somewhere here. And then we just basically ship the grain to there and drop it. And that will supply. That will then feed out to the other two. So we'll need a bigger, a bigger um, dock here. Now, in terms of the goods, um, we want to get them to um, hide. That's for sure. But also, Mitchell Dean has a huge demand for goods, and Romsey has an insane demand for goods. Nine hundred. So the other thing we could potentially do is bring the goods back on a ship maybe to here and try and drop them on this platform if we can drop them here they will feed into the existing goods delivery network for romsey and mitchell so one idea i possibly had was uh, on this platform here just chucking a um what do they call it a building there and trying to do a road connection to here and it looks it looks like it's on the edge of being able to connect from there to there we may have to bring another maybe a dock in here a little bit to make it work but we then could drop goods there and create the demand, as well as what we're doing with Hyde. Now, in terms of steel, steel is a much bigger problem. We do actually have steel right here, um, annoyingly enough. But that steel is being fed into the machine network. Uh, actually, the machines, the machines are indeed tapped out, actually. Yeah, that's a Biggles Wade worthing machine demand, isn't it? So I was wondering if we can get any machines down to Ludgersall, but there's no capacity there. Um, so we still need to make steel here. So I need to uh, have a quick look around and figure out how we're going to get steel into here. Other than that, we should then have a working goods network. Okay, I've had a look around. Um, it, i, I got to say it's becoming a bit of an issue now trying to get things. Trying to make steel as well, especially. It needs uh, ore and coal. Now, this machine uh, steel mill here, coal is not an issue. There's coal nearby. There's even another one here. Coal's not a problem. Or, on the other hand, is a problem. There's one over here, which is fine, but when it starts to need more iron ore, you know, you're talking there's one up here, and then you really have to start looking around the map before you can spot the iron ore. Like, it's there, it's up there, it's very scattered. A lot of it we're already drawing down on, so ore is becoming a bit of a problem. There is a steel mill here, which we could potentially use, but then there's only the iron ore nearby. We'd still have to get all of this coal down there. Which, you know, is it's doable. It's definitely doable. I kind of feel like this one is a better option just because what I'm thinking we can do is grab this iron ore and truck it to there, grab the coal and truck it in, have a train station, train the steel down, put a train station next to this dockyard, drop the steel at the dock, and then we can basically ship the steel to here, and we can even ship some goods back and drop it into the Mitchell Dean Romsey network. So we're going to need a quite an interesting looking dockyard down here, which links into a train yard. But if we can make that work, we can make it. I think we've, we've got to go here. So I'll basically start dropping in some stations and things, and then we'll pick it up and start connecting it and see if we can make it all work. Okay, let me let me show you what I've done. I've done a few little things here. Uh, first of all, stuck a dockyard down at the chem plants. I've stuck another dockyard, slightly longer one, longer, longer one? longer one down at the uh, goods factory down here so we're going to bring obviously the plastic is going to get moved to here but that'll just be uh we'll just do a road network actually between the two we don't need to do any such shenanigans we're going to be picking up from here though aren't we so we're going to need a truck station probably somewhere around here there's no point shipping it though i don't think um so yeah we'll bring the grain in actually we we could we could bring the grain here and then use the same ships to move the plastic there and then they could bring the goods back potentially grain yeah that actually might work although they're going to be bringing yeah i think that'll work okay well we'll leave that for now um now down here's where it's got interesting because i've had to make some uh, some changes let me just quickly smooth that uh so what i did was i extended this platform this dock by an extra that uh, reminds me i haven't put a landing there yet oh, i hate it when it does this dock is outside navigable waters no it's not it's because i've tidied up the terrain before i one second let me make that small make that high because i tidied up the terrain 
before I put the landing in and then the game doesn't like it because it thinks it's not inside navigable waters. It's probably not even complaining about this. It's probably complaining about the other stuff. This is such a pain. Uh, one second. What we're going to have to do is knock that back like this and like this and then configure that put it down and then go back again and re-beautify what I already did there we go just to make it look like it fits in okay that's pure aesthetics on my part. Uh, yeah, then I put one of these down, which is another... Uh, when you go to the buildings, if you can put a, a main building down like that. But then when you, what happens is, and it's something to be careful of, is when you try to connect the road to the main building, it doesn't work. Because what you need to do is you need to add a pedestrian entrance, a small ramp. Even though we're not having pedestrians here, you need to add the ramp along there so that the road will then connect to it, you see? It's a bit weird like that. Um, it won't connect without that. So then you put this road in, bring this road up, I added a, uh, another uh, cargo terminal here, and then that road to there is not too long, so that when you click on it, it's connected to the train station, and the port, and even the truck station, which is interesting, because we've got two terminal things here. It's just the way the pathing works, it's weird. Like, if you didn't have this, it wouldn't be connected to that and that, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so what we've done there is um, basically extend the port. So the port is now connected to the train station. And what that means is when we ship the goods back from here and drop them at the port, they will automatically move into this network here, this rail network. Um, that means that the goods can then be taken via our existing train line, which is this one, to Romsey. So straight away, we have instant demand for goods, which is going to be great. I know we said... We're doing this for hide we are doing this for hide but we'll have instant demand we'll power level this up basically because we have a lot of goods demand already now what i've then done is i've added another road here which come to this field and we're going to pick up the grain from here and take it and drop it there so there's going to be a truck network there we've got the depot already so that's going to drop drop the grain off here it's going to distribute amongst all the platforms just like the other ones some of it will go down to here uh, some of it will go on its way to the other place now, in terms of the steel, I have come into here, put a truck depot down, and put a rather wide, fat, chunky road going all the way across the town now. You can see that. It then goes underneath and comes out at the steel mill. Additionally to that, I've got a road coming off to here to the coal and another road going off to this coal. So we've got coal and iron ore, but we don't, we have more coal than ore. So we're going to have an issue later. And I've put a train station down. Now, what we need to do is get the train into here as well so we can bring that steel down here. And because it's connected to the uh, the dock, we can drop steel off here and have it shipped down to here and then have the goods brought back. So we've got cool options going on. It's pretty nice. Luckily for us, I mean, the platform is at its maximum width now, but luckily for us... Um, we have a, an available platform because we like to build things with future proofing in mind So we have a nice convenient place that we can bring that steel in. we're going to bring it in on this platform here So all we need to do now is figure out a way of connecting this to here And I'm thinking we'll probably come along here and then swing on a tunnel through there That's that's currently what I'm thinking. So what we'll do is we'll head off in this direction with the track We'll take that. Uh, we'll, ta we'll take that one uh, We'll bring it to like roughly where we want to go which is probably like about there-ish and then we will see if we can before the tunnel ideally we want to have well looking at this that splits into there so we need to we need to join into here before that diamond so really we want to be having this is going to be tricky because it jumps through there and then jumps through there I don't really want to join the track too early um, actually, there's a case to be made now for just double tracking that whole thing. Because hmm. at the moment, the line joins here, and in theory, they don't really need to, apart from wherever the train depot is feeding trains into. 
which is probably this train depot here. And that way the trains can get onto that. But there's no reason now we couldn't just keep these separate and then merge into this blue one, is what I'm thinking. So we just widen the tunnel. Which train is that? That's the fuel one. Okay, so what we'll do is we will wait till that train gets out of there. We want to do it before this one completes here, though. Hang on, let's just pause it. Um, this is slightly unexpected. I didn't plan to do this, but I'm thinking it's probably a better idea. So while we've got this merge going on right now, we just don't have it. Let's just do that. This is going to get really tricky to try and see what's going on in the tunnel. You just have to rely on the highlighting to figure it out for you. Um, <clears throat> also, this... Let's get rid of that and that. And then what we have instead, we have a track going along like that. And then it will just simply join to the... One second. And then we'll bring that in over to here. Yeah, that was right. I just double checking. I got that wrong. It's so very hard when you. I wish you could click a button and just remove the land tier. So it's so in the way right now. Um, but this is what we're aiming for. Yeah. So effectively, these are going to be separated. So we'll just need to delete this merge here. Although perhaps we should have left the merge anyway. I don't know. We'll just need to put a, a separate train depot down to feed trains onto it. It'll be fine. We'll get rid of that. Okay, I think it must have left a piece of track. There it is. Yeah, okay. Right, so we got that. We got that. So that should allow the lines to be separate now, which it does. The only... Like I say, side effects is we can't feed trains onto this yet because we don't have a depot. Uh, but that's not a biggie. We can just, we know this platform can't get any wider. So we can literally just, you know, chuck a depot in anywhere around here. We could put it back here. Doesn't really matter where we put it. We can just put it there like that. And then just chuck trains in there. As long as we've got a way of feeding them in. That's all that really matters. There we go. And then we'll put a signal on. One way, please. There we go. And that, that will mean that... Which is going to cost us a bit of money, maintenance, but whatever. Uh, we can unpause it now. Now, all we need to do is, effectively, we need to get that train line down to about here, which is probably where we want to be merging. Let's get it back on tracks. Uh, somewhere here. So this needs to basically... Um, we need signaling on that as well. One second. Do need signaling. It doesn't matter at the moment. Actually, we'll put the signaling in in a minute. We'll put the signaling in in a minute. We'll do that. So we will come along here. Then we'll jump onto that track bar. At whatever speed we can get out of it. 140, say. And then from there, we'll jump onto here. And then we'll have our second track. We'll come in and merge in there like that. Lovely. Right. Now then, do we want to go into the tunnel before we turn, or do we want to have a separate tunnel? Meh. Pros and cons. In this case, because we happen to have a field, what we'll do is we'll do it like that, and then we'll see if we can get that inner one to connect to that now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's absolutely fine. We'll change it to a fancy tunnel entrance. Click OK. And then we'll go and grab that one. And then we'll pick a route. There it is. Beautiful. And then final thing, we'll just go in and just make that a bit bigger. Just smooth that out. 
Okay, now we probably don't need a diamond here, but I just like to put them in anyway, so I don't have to faff around later. That's a personal preference. But I don't think we'll need it. Come on, game. Why are you not playing ball? Okay, all right. Honestly, wish there was an, just an X and you can click it and just hover it on that track and it would just do it. That would be wonderful. Okay, auto sig. Yes, after the diamond go. Let's see where that takes us. It takes us to about here, which is fine. So what we'll do now is we'll put the auto sig reciprocal that way. And then we'll turn off the auto sig and we'll just have a, one after this little merge here. After Well, diversion, split, whatever you want to call it. So that track's good. The only thing we need now is this other main track because it doesn't have anything yet. Um, so what we'll do is we'll basically delete that. And we'll put auto sig back on and put that back and see where that takes us. Actually, that'll only take us to this join. So after that, we'll go in there, after the split. That should signal us along this length to that one, that one maybe. Did it do to that one? I think it probably went to here. So if we go back the other way. No, it doesn't like that, does it? It's not happy auto sigging for some reason. It's kind of tricky to see what's going on right now, isn't it? Uh, we've got a set there. We've got a set here. That's fine. One through there, through there. I think got one here. I think it's just here we need to worry about now. So we'll just before the merge there. And I think that should do it. Okay, now we just need to define the lines and then kick everything off. So I will quickly set up those lines and then we'll see how it runs. All right, I just got an achievement. Big spender, have a monthly maintenance cost of 200 million. <laughs> a monthly maintenance cost of 200 million. That's a hilarious achievement. I've never had that one before. Right, we're just chucking more ore trucks here. Uh, Thatcham Ore. I've got Thatcham Ore going. I've got Thatcham Coal going. Just going to put a few more on that. It's a much shorter run. The coal run is there. Much shorter than that one with the ore. Uh, so the ore is now flowing in, or it should be flowing in very soon. Hopefully they've got some stuff. There we go. Have you got any stuff? Yeah. So that's going to kick off steel. So now we need a steel train to take stuff down there. Uh, diesel, electric... BRT46, we can go with a 246, I think, and then we just need a um, flat car, don't we? So let's just build it out. Uh, we might as well just make it maximum length for now. Can't remember what color that needs to be. Thatcham steel, nice blue. I, I always do steel as blue. I don't know why, but I always do steel as blue. There we go. Right, that line is defined, but I'm just going to double check it. Thatcham steel, so it gets to the station. I don't know why it's called it Thatcham Station 1. Such a naff name. Uh, we'll have that wait for a minute, two minutes maybe, um, before it does its thing. So that's going to set up the steel. The steel will then run into here. Uh, the steel will be dropped off here. Now, that being connected to the port should then dump the steel on, let's think, this one. It should dump the steel on that platform bar. And I've called this Mitchell Dean Steel Goods. I've defined it so that it only picks up steel. And then when it gets to Mitchell Dean Transfer, it only picks up goods. So this will only ever shuttle steel to here and goods back again. And those ships are now starting to turn up. You can see them just queuing up here. It'll take a while to, to settle down. Uh, we've then got Mitchell Dean Grain Plastic. This is a new one which comes out of this um, landing bay. Now, it goes off. What it does is it collects grain. Let me just talk it through from the beginning. <laughs> Mitchell Dean Port. Um, it will come to here. And at Mitchell Dean Port, it's going to take 
I'll tell it to take only grain, actually. Because that's all I actually want it to take. So it will take grain, and then it will head down to Lugashol Annex, which is all the way down here. When it gets to the Annex, it will only load plastic. So it will unload the grain. It will only pick up plastic, but it doesn't wait. It just takes whatever's there. Okay? And then what it does is it goes up to Mitchell Dean Transfer, where it only loads goods. So it will kind of stomp on the toes a little bit of the other goods run but whatever if there's goods coming out of here just move it is is the approach we're taking so either the you know the plastic or the steel line will will quite happily move goods out of here so that's waiting to get going now um the ships are on the way some are coming in from here some are coming out of here and queuing up uh this is going to take time now, in terms of the goods drop-off, when the goods arrive back here, as I mentioned, they should transfer straight onto this train station uh, and then be delivered on their way. What I don't think they'll do is transfer into here. They won't... There's got a lot of trucks going on there. They're all getting stuck in traffic, aren't they? Here to be getting stuck in traffic. There's only three of them. Hmm. We need to have a look at the routing. I think possibly. No, there's no bus. There's no. Yes, there is a bus stop on route there. That could slow it down. That's not ideal. Okay, I may have to look at that. Um. But yeah, what won't happen is the goods that come in on the... Unlike the goods that come in on a train, when the goods come in on the train from here, they will distribute onto that platform and go into Mitchell Dean. However, the goods that come in from the port will go onto that train station only. They will not go onto this truck station. It's too far away. Uh, so they will only go to Romsey. That's okay, because this is only the instant demand we're looking for. Really, this is about Hyde. So once this network gets established... What we'll then do is we'll start to um, shift things over to hide. But that'll do for now. And we'll just see how that runs. Actually, I think... Yes, I didn't drop any trucks on here, did I? That's the one thing I didn't do. Um, Mitchell Dean Grain. We'll have to call that Grain 1. And we'll have Mitchell Dean Grain 2, which will colour a much lighter orange. And that will go from here. And I added a second cargo platform there, but it will never use it. You have to force it to use it. Because it's further away, technically, so it will never use it. It's only a drop, so they're really, really small. Um, let's see how many we put on that line. So there were 10 vehicles on that line, and this is at least as long as that one. So I think we'll do the same. Um... So I'll pull in. Should we go with the green? There's ten of them in a very, very light orange. And we'll stick them on Mitchell Dean Green. Actually, why are you those kind of vehicles? That's interesting. You don't need to then. They only carry Actually the really old ones, aren't they? They should be using dump trucks for grain. Possibly don't need quite so many of them now. Because they have a much, much bigger capacity. Yeah, that's, that's a, a much better thing. This one, of course, just by osmosis gets delivered into to here. It's already connected to that, so we don't need trucks for this one. But that'll bring a lot more grain in. We'll let it run now and just let it settle down and then see and adjust things. Actually, as with all things shipping, this is going to take a while to establish itself. Like, the ships did not even move grain down there yet. So there's going to take a, it's going to take probably at least a year in game terms. What you can see, though, is the grain is starting to be, even on these existing ones, they're starting to allow uh, the chem plants some of the grain, you see? These two. And the new one is basically supplementing what's needed on the alcohol run, plus allocating some to the chem plant. So... These three will definitely help to balance out that one. What will happen, though, as this one starts to get bigger and bigger, is it'll start to take the grain away from the alcohol run, 
and then we will have to supplement it with another one. Like I say, I'm probably going to go for that one and put a port there and bring it down that way. Uh, but that is, unfortunately, it for this video. We will cover this in the next video, see how it's got to expand it as necessary, and then we'll get those goods over to Hyde. That'll be the next one. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Take care, guys. Happy constructing.